So then, hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to bring you episode number 8 of our MotoGP 15 career mode here. We are in Moto3 of course still, the next round of the season is at Mizano. You can see actually the rest of the calendar there, after today there's only two more episodes before we end the Moto3 season. So um, by the time we're getting to episode 10 we'll actually be moving, or episode 11 sorry. Uh, we'll be moving into Moto2, hopefully, and uh, progressing through the season there. So, uh, Mizano in real life, although I didn't actually watch much of the Moto3 season in real life because we didn't have BT Sports, um, apparently that was the most chaotic race of the season. Um, so, we'll hopefully see a very chaotic race for today. Now, last episode, in theory, we should have signed... A contract with a new team and that was Red Bull KTM IO as you can see uh, we have confirmed sign for Red Bull KTM our new teammates are no longer Guevara, Banyaya and Jorge Martin we now have Miguel Oliveira who's the man we should be um, we should be battling with apparently he's our rival and then Carol Haneke and Brad Binder and of course last episode we won our first race as well our first race win in our career at our home race in Silverstone. So we have a new race objective at this new team which is 8th position. But today we're here at Mazzano ready for the race and there you can see uh, our new bike with of course our number 74 in dedication to uh, De Giro Cato. Anyway as someone kindly reminded me in the comments section for the last episode bike development is reset completely when you sign for a new team but in all honesty because this bike is so good anyway it's not that that factor isn't actually going to matter too much in all honesty because this team is so good anyway so then here you can see the grid miguel Oliveira, our rival and uh and teammate he's third hanaka one of our other teammates will be disappointed with 10th and there you can see the rest of the order featuring some of our teammates or ex-teammates sorry Guevara Martin for example. The four lights are on and they are now off here at Mizano. This is going to be somewhat of a baptism of fire because I don't know this track very well whatsoever so in terms of a debut I hope Red Bull KTM aren't expecting all that much of me. Also I haven't played this game in some time it's been about potentially two weeks since I last played this game so I'm not expecting too much not highly, um, um, yeah, um, my, my objective isn't too high, to be honest with you, in this one. We are up to 27th already, though, in this one, as uh, Cornfile sits us up slightly, and we sit him up with a bit of a biff. I'm going to try and make less contact with people as well in this one, because I, I know you can't really make contact with people in real life, otherwise you fall off. So I'm going to try and live by those standards on this game as well, and perhaps try and make less contact with people in the future. Um, we've gone very deep though into that left-hander and consequently quite wide, but thankfully haven't lost any positions. This is a six-lap race as well, just for referencing. Next rider up the road is Andrea Migno, who uh, is now to our left. Now behind us, and well, I said I wasn't going to make contact, but we almost dropped Wayne... I, Wayne, not Wayne Gardner, it's not flipping Wayne Gardner, what's his name, Remy Gardner. We almost dropped Remy Gardner to the floor there, almost making some contact there with Ertl. Going to see if we can just get up the inside there of Danilo as well. And somehow we fall off, I don't quite know how that happened, but we fall off, which obviously isn't massively ideal, but um, there we go. Anyway, we're, we're through cleanly now, not entirely, we got on the curb, I know, but it, just, curbs don't just spit you out, anyway. Um, we've got Guevara and Olivio Loy, both to our left-hand side, which is the inside for the, the... What a move. That was quite nice around the outside. Oh, I was too busy looking behind me, however. Uh, in front of us are two Italian riders, Ferrari and Bagnaia. Someone just went really wide in front of us. It looked like a black bike, so I think it was either Mazbu or, uh, or potentially McPhee there as Bagnaia. Gets very close to our right-hand side, but I think we should be able to get through with a more powerful KTM engine past these two Mahindras, so we breeze past Ferrari there on the straight as well. Banyaya thinking of a move back up the inside though, and I think he might make that stick actually, and he does on the S-Bar bike, so fair play, but we get a better X out of the, out of the left-hander, and uh, through we go for this right-hander through the final corner, Hiroki Ono lunges at Andrea Locatelli and goes through. We should get a better exit than both of them, and we'll hopefully go past both of them down the straight, and we do. Uh, now, Fanati, to be fair, was pretty underwhelming in this season in real life, but actually Bastianini was very, very good, and actually gave Ken 
a run for his money in the championship. So that's actually a mistake from this game, from the, whoever made this game in actually thinking Bastianini is worse than he actually is because he shouldn't be here. He should be at the top of the order based on his performances in real life, really. Um, but unfortunately, he's not being credited with that. We, however, have gone past McPhee. And now we're trying to get past Fanati and Bastianini, and we do that just about through that right-hander. We haven't made any positions on this lap. Philip Ertl has just fallen off, which is a shame for the German rider. We are making a very risky move, but we go around the outside of Masbu. And of Hanukkah, oh my word, we almost hit the back of Vasquez and Antonelli. When you watch that, when I watch that back in editing, I will have no idea how we did not just go absolutely tit over face into the back end of Antonelli and Vazquez right there. We've gone very wide though through the penultimate corner, which is not ideal. But yeah, as I was saying, a Vazquez is really underachieving. He usually finishes fourth in these races, um, but he's nowhere near that. Are we going to drag Antonelli to the line? Not quite, but we're going to go through hopefully into turn one and maybe at the inside of Vazquez as well. We should be able to take fourth here. We should be able to get past all three of these guys really, given they're in such close proximity. Uh, but you can see up the road the massive gap that there is up to the likes of Oliveira, Kent, and Quattararo. Yeah, this is going to be a, this is actually going to be quite a struggle. We've got Vinales though on exit, so that's going to be okay. That's job done. That's one position made. But look at the the gap actually that Navarro and uh, and Binder have managed to stretch out over myself and Vinales is quite large, and it's not going to be helped if Isaac Vinales behind us continues to just like kick us through the corner and uh, having said that it was going to be extremely easy to get past all three of these guys well it's not going to be because Navarro and Binder have just taken off into the distance um, which is not helpful we do go flat out through there though I think we're going to gain a bit of time though through these right handers because we're a lot quicker than the AIR again we come quite close but not quite as close as before and uh, can we do anything do you think but I, I wonder can we at least get Navarro here I reckon we can get Navarro, but he's thinking of going up the inside of Binder. Oh, my word. And we almost got well out of shape there. And if, I tell you, if Navarro hadn't attempted to go up the inside of Binder, we would have been absolutely fine. We would have made the position. But because because um, Navarro lunged it at Binder, the, the gap just slowly closed completely um, on us. But nevertheless, Danny Kent wins from Oliveira and then Fabio Quattararo. Uh, Binder 4th, Navarro 5th, us in 6th, which is disappointing based on previous results and the fact that we're on a better bike now. So, well, on, in theory, anyway. Um, though it doesn't have any um, it doesn't have any data packs, to be fair. Um, but given I don't know this track uh, and the struggles that we had getting through the order, I will take 6th. Though we could have potentially even had 4th going through the final corner. Uh, Vinales takes 7th. A very disappointing race for Vazquez. He's only 8th. Then it's Antonelli and Masbu rounding out the top 10. Hanukkah and McPhee, Fanati and Bastianini, and then Locatelli in 15th, just in front of Hiroki Ono. And Bagnaia, Ferrari, Migno, Loy, Cornfile, Io, Garner, Guevara, Ertel, who fell off, is the championship. Then Kent is now only 17 points behind Quattararo after Kent won, and Quattararo only came third. Uh, Oliveira is still in a pretty damn distant third. He's going to have to win quite a few races before the end of the season to close that 56-point gap. Then it's Vazquez still fourth, but a lot more cut adrift after a pretty poor eighth for him today. Uh, Binder is fifth. He stretched away from us slightly after beating us today, so our progress through the table is stunted slightly. We stay sixth. Navarro up to seventh past Hanukkah. Then it's Vinales in ninth. Mazbu in tenth. Bastianini. Uh, in 11th, but Antonelli's caught up with him slightly, just two points between them. Then McPhee, Fanati, Locatelli, Ono and Bagnaia are the final points paying uh, finishers so far in this season. So overall, uh, myself, Yamboy, probably not overly happy with 6th place for the new team, but obviously it's a new bike to get used to. The KTM is very different to the Mahindra, it's a lot bulkier than the old bike. So it's going to take some time to get used to, but for now, it is a sixth place to open up our career for Red Bull KTM IO. Right then, well that pretty much, I mean, there's not really much more I can say, in all honesty, um, after the race. I, I don't know what, what else we can do, um, but uh, yeah, there you can see our, uh, our progress chart. Unfortunately, we don't get a really cool snapback like everyone else in the team does. We're going to move ahead to the calendar, and we've actually now got... A, a race at Aragon. Uh, 
which is yet another track I don't really know that well, but I think I know it slightly better than I know Mizano. Okay, so pretty cloudy skies around the very poorly rendered arrow. Is it just me? Like, this track, for some reason, doesn't really look as good as the, um, as the other tracks do. Anyway, I'm just going to stick one on the chassis, because at this point in, the se in this season, it really just does not matter what I put the data packs on. Anyway, we're going to go ahead to the track then for the second race of today's uh, episode. And uh, we are at Aragon. Jorge Navarro at his home Grand Prix is starting in a very impressive second place. Other than that, not really many surprises in terms of the grid. Lots of Spaniards, though, on the uh, grid. You all know about the Spanish takeover that is, uh, that is going on in MotoGP the majority of the time. Uh, especially Mar Marquez, Lorenzo, Pedroza, you know, the main class. But in the, in the lower classes as well, it's the same Rabat, Alex Marquez... In this category, there's, there's the same, so it's, um, yeah, th th there's, the fact there's a lot of home Grand Prix for, for Spaniards is coupled by the fact there's a lot of Spaniards. Anyway, talking about a lot of stuff, there's been a lot of crashes because there's people down, masbu has gone down. At turn to be fair, I probably should have seen this coming because that first corner is about as tight as a 360 degree hairpin. So, it, I mean... It's, it's literally, it's sharp. The corner is sharp. If the, if this track was an object, you would cut your finger on that first corner. So the fact that people have gone down isn't very surprising. Mazbu, though, was one of them, and Hiroki Ono was the other. We capitalised from basically the whole of the back end of the order going extremely slowly through that first corner to the fact that, to the tune of being now in 21st place, and now going up the inside of Io for 20th place through the chicane, which I really like, but we've actually messed up massively, and that's allowed Io back through. So after gaining about, what, 13 positions on the first corner, we actually haven't gained a position since, but hopefully that will change. We'll get in the slipstream here of, uh, of Nicky Io, and we should be able to make a move. Up in front of that is Jakob Kornfile, who's up in 19th place. That would be probably his best result of the season if he keeps it. Uh, but we're going up the inside of him, and a Mazbu. That was a very late, last of the late breakers... Uh, unplanned manoeuvre, it has to be said. At no point was I planning to make that move. Uh, Mazbu's trying to get back at us. Obviously, he's going to have quite a bit of pace because he's out of position. Um, but uh, Hiroki Ono will be uh, down the order as well. He's crashed quite a few times, actually, this season already. Uh, we're now getting the slipstream of the RW Racing Bike, Olivio Loy, and breezing past him. I think the problem is the fact that everyone was going so slow, it really exploded the order still. So there's a lot of gaps throughout the order. So you've just to make a position, you've got to gain quite a lot of time uh, there as we go up the inside of Ferrari and uh, Ertl, but also climb the curb quite substantially. Uh, next up is Banyaya as we go down into this right-hander and then, of course, the left that follows. Lovely sequence of corners, that one. But look at the gap up from Banyaya to 14. If anything, those two crashes have actually hurt us substantially as we go massively wide through there. I just... You know, at this point in time, I just can't be bothered, really, to, to abide by um, by track limits, in all honesty. But that look at the gap that we've now got to close to the riders in front. We've gone past Banyaya, though, for 14th place, so that's something. Right, so we have managed to sort of shut up and concentrate a little bit, and in that time, we've had uh, we've actually managed to pretty much catch McPhee, Locatelli, and Bastianini um, halfway through lap three which is re really worrying, to be honest with you, that we are only catching the likes of these guys at this point. Although, that's a rider down. That is Efren Vazquez. Who, oh, no, it's Danny Kent. How was Danny Kent that far down in the first place? Unless, actually, I'll tell you what, the fact that um, it's uh, such a gap from Banyaya to these guys, I didn't actually realise this, this lot are all massively close together. There's actually a massive gaggle there. I haven't, there hasn't really been much pack explosion at the front of the order, but Danny Kent's fallen off, and that's going to hurt his title chances, because he's already quite a distance behind Quattararo. Antonelli, although he's trying to battle with us, he's also got Bastianini in his sights, but we get a much better run, and pass both of them. Uh, but yeah, Danny Kent going down then, so Danny Kent, Mazbu, and Hiroki Ono having fallen off in this one. Meanwhile, we're going to try and get past Brad Binder here, one of our teammates, that should be job done, we're past before we even get to the corner. And uh, through we go. Next up, Hanukkah and Isaac Vinales. Someone's just gone down behind. That is Nico Antonelli, who's hit the deck. Yeah, the fact that so many riders are going down is uh, quite, quite interesting, it has to be said. We're now right with Hanukkah and Vinales. We've gone around the outside of Vinales, and now it's Hanukkah, our teammate. 
And through we go, just about round the outside. Livio Lois just dropped it as well. I assume down at turn one. Quite a lot of crashes then here at Aragon. We are now right with Vazquez and Quattararo. And uh, if we can hold it with them, I reckon a podium is on the cards here. Because uh, if, if we can keep with them, we can just slipstream them down the back straight and then take them through the final corner. But we've just got to make sure that we, uh, that we do what we say we're going to do and, you know, stick with them. Someone's gone down behind because the yellow flag has just come out. Uh, and it's Isaac Vinales on the Husqvarna bike. So um, a lot of crashes, it has to be said. So uh, the likes of Bastianini, Frenati, uh, they could be getting seriously helped here. By the fact so many riders have gone down. Anyway, can we get in the slipstream here of Vasquez and Quattararo? They seem just a little bit too far away, but we're going certainly quicker than Vasquez. We're in the slipstream now. Is it a little bit too late down the straight to really be... Um, to make it a move? We break a lot later trying to get around the outside. Can we do that? Surely not. We might have a bit more pace to get a cut back. Will we? Yes, we will, and we're going to take it. Around the final corner with the cutback, and we should hold on. Navarro wins the race for the first time this season. Jorge Navarro wins on the Estrella Galizia bike. That really is a turn up for the book at his home Grand Prix. A turn up for the books, even. Not a singular book, all the books. Every book. It's a turn up for all of the books. Navarro wins from our rival Oliveira, and we take a podium position on the final corner of the entire race. It wasn't looking as if it was going to happen. It looked as if Quattararo and Vasquez were going to force us out around the outside, which was, of course, never going to happen. But uh, we managed to get the cut back, and we managed to get the podium. Uh, Quattararo then fourth from Vasquez in fifth, and it's Hanukkah, Binder, Bastianini uh, in eighth, McPhee in ninth, and Isaac Vinales after falling off in tenth. Uh, Finati eleventh, and Kent, he fell off as well. He will only take twelfth place, and it's Locatelli, Antonelli, and Banyaya, who gets another point in 15th. Unfortunately, at the expense of Ertel and Cornfile, who still don't have a point. And it's Ferrari, Ono, Io, Migno, and Martin. And uh, with the certain lack of Alexis Masbu in that top 15, or top 20, certainly, I would assume he has retired from the race, and he did. Uh, he did obviously fall off, so clearly the damage to that uh, Saxo print bike was far too heavy. Uh, anyway, in the championship now, Quattararo has uh, extended his lead over Kent to 26 points. And obviously, the fact that Quattararo only came fourth did really help Kent out. If Quattararo had won, that would have been a completely different issue. Uh, but Kent still second. Oliveira gaining on both of them now in third. Vasquez a full 100 points off the, uh, the title leaders. And Navarro jumps two riders, including ourselves, up into fifth after winning. Uh, he's now two points clear of us. And we're now two points clear of Binder. So we managed to get past Binder, but we lost the position to Navarro. Hence, uh, we, we net. In terms of net movement, we don't go anywhere. We stay in sixth. Uh, Hanukkah is eighth. Vinales is ninth. And it's Masbu, Bastianini, Antonelli, McPhee, Fanati, and Locatelli. With Ono and Banyaya. And Banyaya obviously scored another point today. So then, a podium finish. It's nice to be back. In, uh, in the uh, the champagne-filled section of Park Ferme, though, given I'm only 18, obviously in real life, but on the game as well. I, am I allowed? Yeah, I am allowed champagne, actually, but um, Navarro behind... Actually, I think everyone on that podium is allowed. If Quattararo was there, it would be a complete no-no. We'd have to drink an energy drink, but um, there is actually technically another test... Uh, at Aragon after that one, but given um, given data packs don't really matter anymore, I'll probably do it, but I won't actually show you. Um, but uh, in in the knowledge of that, expect me to go to Mategi with uh, three or four random data packs, um, just just as an explanation. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Moto uh, Moto GP Career Mode Walkthrough. I don't know what I was about to say, but Moto GP Career Mode Walkthrough. If you have enjoyed, feel free to hit the likes button, subscribe if you're new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. But nevertheless, it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. <laughs>